My name is Rochelle. I am a child of God who is powerless over drugs and alcohol and codependency, but today I choose recovery. Hello, hello. I just love that. I know I'm in the right place when I hear that back. Uh, again, I want to welcome all of you, especially the newcomers. We are so glad that you are here tonight. Recovery is possible, one day at a time. We look forward to coming alongside you during your recovery journey, and so we're glad you're here. This, this recovery thing, it really is a journey. Um, there'll be good days, and there's going to be bad days. Um, there's going to be great days, and then okay days. However, with the help of Jesus, the 12 Steps, a sponsor, and a solid recovery community, I am here to tell you that you can walk through anything without returning to your addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors. It is so amazing to sit back and to watch what God's been doing with a bunch of people who show up here and freely admit that we struggle with addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors. Um, but we gather together to choose recovery through their growing trust in Jesus. And he guides us to freedom by following the simple recovery path. It really does work. We're all here. We're living proof. And that's really what happens here on Monday nights. You heard Kip say earlier, we follow a simple recovery path. It consists of the five essentials, Jesus, 12 steps, sponsor, meetings, and service. This is what works, and, and, and this really is what makes our recovery permanent, growing, and joy-filled when we use all of these five essentials. And, and by doing these things in our life and sharing the message with others, we've watched not just this ministry go, be, because it's not about the people in the seats. It's about what's happening in the lives of the people that are sitting in the seats. We are watching lives get transformed here. Let's give God a hand for that. Go, God. It's really God. It is really God that does the transformation in us. We just show up and, and we, you know, we, we work this program to the best of our ability, and God is the one that changes us. And over the years, we've met so many people with different addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors. And I want to touch on this for a moment because it's come to my realization sometimes that, you know, we get new people in here and they hear these words, but they don't really know what they mean. Um, you know, we, we may know what we struggle with. So, you know, if I'm struggling with addiction, I certainly know what that is. But, but sometimes we don't know these other terms. So I want to go over the definitions of these um, real quick. Um, an addiction is an unhealthy use of a substance with an inability to stop such as alcohol, drugs, food, and smoking. Now, an affliction is something we didn't cause, but it causes us suffering, such as abuse, abandonment, codependency, divorce, relationship issues, anger, depression, fear, pride, and unforgiveness. Now, a compulsive behavior is the continued return to harmful behavior with an inability to stop such as gambling, cutting, workaholism, control, relationship addiction, sex addiction, and shopping. Now, over the years, we've um, had so many people come through the doors of CR that have had many str different struggles, and that's because the same 12 steps work for any addiction, affliction, and compulsive behavior that you are struggling with. No matter what it is that you're struggling with, we have a solution here. Recovery is possible because nothing is impossible with God. We really mean it. That's why we put it on our shirts. Nothing is impossible with God. No matter what you're struggling with, we can recover. Did you know that recovery programs have been around since like the 1930s? Like that's like a really long time. Um, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, AA, it was the first 12-step program. It was the first 12-step fellowship and it was founded in 1935 by Bill Wilson and Dr. Robert Holbrook-Smith known to AA members as Bill W. and Dr. Bob in Akron, Ohio. Now, since then, millions of people have recovered from a hopeless state of mind through 12-step recovery. The 12 steps work, well, the 12 steps work if we work them. Now, also, 12-step recovery, is, it's not the only way to recover from our addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors. Um, however, it is, in fact, a proven way to recover from addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors. And, and I like proven ways. Um, in my past life, I, I, I did many things that, that didn't prove out to be um, very well for my recovery. So the idea that there's something out there that's proven to work, I like that. 
Uh, the basics of this program are founded on the idea of one alcoholic who has stayed sober helping another alcoholic stay sober. However, you know, the idea of one person helping another person, it didn't just start with AA. It, it, it's been around way longer than the 1930s. In fact, the Bible, you know, this book that we talk about um, a lot around here, um, we read about it like in the second chapter. So like in the very beginning of this thing, we read about a man named Jethro who was a father-in-law to a man named Moses. And he mentored Moses. And then Moses, Moses turned around and he mentored a man named Jethro. And then if you go throughout here and, and you go into the New Testament and there's the four gospels, they're the beginning of the New Testament. Now in here, these are the stories of the life and the ministry of Jesus. They're called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these stories, they share how Jesus mentored the disciples. And later on, when you keep on reading, you'll see an example of mentorship when a guy named Barnabas mentored Paul, who became one of the first Christian leaders. And then Paul, he mentored a young man named Timothy. And you'll find in the chapters of Timothy, Paul gives Timothy instructions on living and leading others. He instructs him to pass on this stuff, pass on what he teaches him, pass on to others. And he wants them to pass on to others so that they can pass on to others. 2 Timothy 2.2 says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. See, around here in 12-step recovery, we call these relationships with other people sponsorship. One person helping another person who helps another person to help another person. So no matter what area of recovery you're in, having a sponsor, it's vital. It is vital. We need other people. So, um, it, you know, the truth is if we knew how to recover from our addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors on our own, we wouldn't be here today. We would have never crossed that door. So one of the first suggestions that you hear when you come into any 12-step recovery um, program, you'll, one of the first things you'll hear is you're encouraged to get a sponsor. So tonight as we continue this recovery journey together, um, I thought it'd be really helpful to talk about sponsors. You know, we have these ask it baskets, and, and there is always questions and ask it baskets about sponsors. It never fails. Somebody is always wanting to know, and, and the reason is is because we don't walk in here knowing about this stuff. You know, we may sit in here for a while, and until someone kind of spells things out, I don't know about you, but for me, it takes a little while for me to get this stuff in my head. And, and so um, since recovery, 12-step recovery isn't possible without one, um, I thought it'd be a great idea to talk about it, because what do we say about sponsors? We say sponsors get one. Exactly. When it comes to sponsorship, we're always hearing questions. So I'm going to attempt to answer some of the questions that we hear all the time. So the first question, um, you all got notes when you came in, so you can take some notes on there. We got some fill in the blanks, all that good stuff. Write something down if God speaks to you. Um, maybe God's been calling you to talk to somebody. Oh, oh you, he's getting ahead of the game. We, 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 he's filling them in. Well, let's see if he's got them matched up properly. Okay. Matched up with whatever answer I may have came up with. Um, <laughs> so our first question we have for tonight that everyone always asks is, what's a sponsor? What is a sponsor? A sponsor is someone who's been where we want to go in our 12-step recovery program. So a sponsor would be one that has completed all the 12 steps, because that's where we want to go. We want to complete the program. Um, and we want to continue, keep, re continue working this program. And... And so they can share their experience on what they learned um, during their journey on how they got there. Now, sponsorship's a basic part of belonging to a 12-step recovery fellowship. A sponsor is someone who's the same gender as you are, who has experienced a similar struggle that you have experienced, and who has some ongoing success in their recovery by engaging in all five of the essentials themselves. Jesus, sponsor, meetings, 12 steps, and service. Now, what I mean by um, who have experienced the same struggle as you have experienced is if you're struggling here with codependency and you have no drug addiction, you don't want to ask someone that has only had drug addiction, you know, to sponsor you because they've not worked, they, they don't have area of, of codependency recovery. So you want to find someone that's had a similar struggle with you. They're not therapists. 
They don't know everything. However, it's a good idea to take the suggestions that your sponsor gives you. Because if you want what they have, then you do what they do. So, who needs a sponsor? Well, every one of us. <laughs> if we're sitting in this room right now, you are not exempt from needing a sponsor. You showed up here in a 12-step recovery program because you need help from an addiction, affliction, or a compulsive behavior. So every one of us needs a sponsor. The Bible says, read this with me in Ecclesiastes 4.9. Two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other one can help them up. But if someone is alone, there is no one to help him. Two can resist an attack that would defeat one person. It is so easy for us, especially early in recovery, to be defeated by the enemy. It is so easy. Now, the next question is, what does a sponsor do? I mean, that's, I hear all that. What's my sponsor supposed to do for me? Are they supposed to, yeah, I heard it pay rent, right? They're supposed to lend me money. They're supposed to pay rent. They're supposed to drive. Yes, they're supposed to drive me everywhere, right? Be a food bank. No, sorry, guys. That's not the answer. A sponsor's primary responsibility is a sponsor's job is to walk me through the 12 steps. They are to help me work those 12 steps. They will walk with you along your 12-step journey, and they will show you the path that they have traveled as you guys walk together. They'll put your hand, I hear it all the time, they'll put your hand in Jesus' hand, They'll, they'll walk with you as you work this recovery program. Sponsors share their experience, their strength, and their hope with sponsees. Now, there's different, you know, different people will describe their sponsors in different ways. Some people describe their sponsor as a loving, compassionate someone who they can count on that will listen and support them no matter what, that they don't feel judged by. Others value the objectivity and the detachment that sponsors can offer, relying on their direct and honest input even though it may be difficult to accept. Others just manually turn for their sponsors just for guidance to work through the 12 steps. Others may call their sponsor when they're feeling, uh, finding themselves in a place of overwhelmness and anxious and just don't know how to walk through the current situation they're in. There's many different ways that sponsors can walk through relation, relationships with sponsees. And so they're described in different ways. However, the sponsor's primary purpose is to walk them through the 12 steps. Now, I'll tell you, my sponsor was there when my hair was on fire because it was, it was on fire a lot early recovery. And so I'm very grateful that I, I, I called her every day. And it may have been just for things like I'm sitting in a grocery store and I'm overwhelmed and I don't know what to pick up on the shelf. And it wasn't that she was going to tell me what to pick up on the shelf, but she was going to help walk through the anxiety that I was feeling to let me know if I picked the wrong thing, it wasn't going to be the end of the world. Because I didn't know that coming in. Coming into recovery, every decision I made was like life or death to me. But my sponsor was there to answer the phone and, and walk me through real life situations. Now, the next question we hear people ask all the time is, why do I need a sponsor? Like, why? I see the steps there. I can pick up the book. I can read it myself. I can walk through it. Why do I need a sponsor? Well, guys, we need a sponsor because we cannot work the steps alone. I mean, if you read the steps, there's nowhere in there that it says, like, speak to yourself about these things. <laughs> Call yourself about this. I mean, it's, we need another sponsor to work the steps. The 12 steps cannot be completed by yourself because you can't solve the problem with the same mind that created the problem. And I don't know about you, but I can convince myself a lot of things when, when reading something. And, and so my sponsor would help me interpretate, interpret what I just read. I read once, someone asked, why do I need a sponsor? And I, I read this, and it, it's just spot on. It was for me. It's really hard to spot self-deception by yourself. We came in this program living in denial. That was our step one. <laughs> Coming out of denial is going to take the help of somebody else. And seriously, sponsors help us walk through the 12 steps by providing explanation, guidance, and encouragement. Proverbs 27, 17 says... As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Working these 12 steps can be brutally painful for your addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors. And you need the aid of someone else who's gone through that process before. Mine helped me to stay balanced with my inventory. 
I really struggled with remembering any of the good stuff that I did in my past. I also needed to be reminded while I was doing that fourth step that I was more than my past mistakes. That the past mistakes that I was writing down, they didn't define who I was. That wasn't who God seen me as. And I needed someone to tell me that. It was a hard process for me to look at. Another reason we need a sponsor is they help us provide accountability when we start slacking. You see, I said when we start slacking, because most of us start at some point. I know I needed this for sure, and my sponsor helped me resist looking for the easier, softer way, which was what I was used to be seeking. They can confront us with our procrastination and on our unwillingness when necessary, and they can help us stay focused on what's important. Sponsors have a way of helping us um, be honest with ourselves, and most of us walk in here with a lot of fear. Um, we have many questions that we're just not really willing to ask people, and we have many secrets that we really don't want to tell people. So in order to get better and to heal from that, we need relationships with someone else so that we can share those fears and secrets. And this happens when we're working 12-step recovery with a sponsor. As you work those steps, you build a relationship with somebody. So when it comes time to share those things that you're afraid to share anybody, you found trust in somebody through a sponsorship program. And sponsorship creates a safe environment in which we can expose a little bit of who we are. Our addictions, afflictions, and, and our addictions and afflictions cause isolation, and they cause loneliness. Having one person that we can trust, with whom we can share our feelings and fears, helps reduce that loneliness and isolation. And that's really what our, we've been craving. And the 12 steps require self-examination. And this alone is a difficult process. Without assistance and encouragement, like I said, you know, my own experience, I needed someone to help encourage me to walk through that. The fourth, fifth, and ninth steps require this specifically self-examining ourselves. It's, the it's in the first step, and it requires us to look honestly at that powerlessness over our active substance or behavior and the unmanageability of our lives. Sponsors can help us be honest with ourselves and our program by pointing out when we may be deluding ourselves. That was my big thing that my sponsor helped me see. She'd ask me these questions like, are you sure that's really how it happened? I'd come in here with this elaborate story of like a situation and she'd be like, did they really say that to you in that way? <laughs> and I'd like have to, okay, so maybe it wasn't that. They may have asked me to pick up my piece of paper. They didn't exactly tell me you're a horrible person that can't get nothing right. You know, but, but there was this stuff that I would hear, and my sponsor would help me, you know, cipher through that. Um, being honest with our sponsor, it increases our humility. It helps us learn to live in reality rather than fantasy worlds, too, because I'm telling you, my other extreme was to live in this little bubble where things were peaches and cream, and I just wanted to not, I just wanted to stuff all that stuff, you know? And she helped me walk through this. I'm here to say, trust me, justification, rationalization, and just place excuses um, they were my friend when I walked here in recovery. You may know about them too. And my sponsor helped me recognize those in my life. Sponsors also help us stay accountable to that fellowship aspect of it. Um, a sponsor can be an encouragement to get us out of ourselves and intentionally fellowship with other people. We need relationships with not just our sponsors. We need other people. We need other accountability people. We need other like-minded people that are going in the same direction that we are going, and our sponsors can encourage us to form those relationships. There's something about being asked the question, so how many meetings did you attend this week? That really makes you stay accountable to your recovery program. Now, next question is, how do I become a sponsor? Well, a sponsor. A sponsor teaches you how to sponsor others. Just like when, we read in the, just like when I read in the, mem in the mentorship in, in Timothy 2.2, 2, and the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. This is how the program works. We take what we've learned from our sponsors and we share it with others. And then they share it with others. We learn how to sponsor other people by following the directions that our sponsor guided us with. A sponsor models the 12-step recovery program, and by watching them do what they do, we learn how to model it for other people. We cannot go out and sponsor others if we've walked through, not walked through the 12 steps with a sponsor with someone else, because that's how we learn to do this. I just want to make a clear one thing. No two sponsors are exactly the same. 
There is no ideal sponsor. There's no perfect sponsor. There's no perfect sponsee. We are all human beings trying to share our experience, strength, and hope and assist others in this recovery journey. So the next question, because everybody really wants to know, like, okay, so how do I find a sponsor? Because like you could talk about sponsors, but how do I find one? Because now you guys are all sitting in your seats and you're all antsy and you want to know, like, if you don't have a sponsor, where do you find the sponsor? Well, I wanted to make sure that I had the perfect answer on where you can go find your sponsor. And so I did a lot of research and I come up with this. Watch this. Hi everybody, my name is Anthony and I'm with Renta Sponsor. Are you tired of being told like it is? Are you still looking for that easier, softer way? Have you had enough of that same old time tested direction? Try Rent a Sponsor. With Rent a Sponsor, there is absolutely no reading, there's no writing, and absolutely no deadlines. Our basic standard package includes listening to crying and whining without constant references to the big book. <laughs> Continued agreement to your excuses and your rationalizations. Work the steps you want in any order you choose. <laughs> and you can finally make it all about you. Why walk the walk when you can just talk the talk? <laughs> Stay sober on worst stories alone. And you can save your ass without the cost of losing your face. Yes, at rent -a sponsor we know how unique you really are, and we really do understand. So, don't hesitate. Call rent -a sponsor at 1-800-O-Poor-Me or 1-800-Poor-Me-1. Call now, and the fourth step writing service will be provided to you at no additional cost. That's right. We will take your inventory for you. <laughs> rent -a sponsor where mediocrity is our middle name. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, it might not be as easy as picking up the phone and calling 1-800-O-Poor-Me. <laughs> However, there is a way for you to find a sponsor, and it's a proven way that how we've all found our sponsors, and I find a sponsor by attending meetings, guys. That's where it is. You have to attend meetings. And, and not just like this meeting sitting in here. Because, you know, this is a meeting. It's a great speaker type meeting. You hear lots of good stuff. You hear lessons, testimonies, all that good stuff. But here's the thing. There's lots of people sitting in this room that have worked the 12 steps, that have sponsors, that are sponsoring other people. And when you're just sitting in this room and not going to other meetings, you don't get to hear their stories. And so you don't get to hear from them. And when you don't get to hear from them, you, you can't, you know, ask them to be a sponsor because you... You know, you're probably not going to just random, walk up to some random person and ask them to be your sponsor. At least I hope not. Get to know people by hearing them share. Now, um, I, I thought everyone would get a, a laugh out of that because, you know, we're always looking for the easier, softer way, aren't we? That's just who we are. Um, but on a very serious note, guys, just go to meetings. Um, listen to what others say. Um, find someone who has completed the 12 steps and they are living a life that you want to have. Recovery is a very, very serious matter. This is your life at stake. This is your life. Do you want to live? Because if you do, I encourage you, go out and get a sponsor. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is ask. As a matter of fact, um, you know, we don't normally do this in here because it's just not a, not a place that we um, have, have the spot to do it at. However, um, there are people in here right now that have worked the 12 steps with a sponsor, completely worked all the 12 steps with a sponsor, and are actively sponsoring other people, and they are willing to sponsor others too. Um, and so I'm going to ask these people to raise your hand. Raise your hand if you are in here, you have actively worked the 12 steps. Now, if you don't have a sponsor, I encourage you to look around these rooms, okay? But you're not hearing from these people in here. So what I'm asking you to do is go into the small groups, go into the other recovery groups, and listen to what those people share that just raised your hand. The ones that raised their hands have worked the program, and they've got a sponsor, and, the, and, and go and listen to how they share, and then, and then go and talk to them afterwards. This is how you find a sponsor. Now I'm going to invite the band back up here. 
And, and, and we're going to spend some time, um, we, we open up this altar every Monday nights, and um, if you've been sitting here full of fear or thinking that maybe you don't need to do this thing like everyone else because you're unique, I'm going to be praying for you tonight because I've been there, and I know that's a dangerous place. But I pray that if you're sitting there right now and you're thinking you're a little bit different, that you don't have to get a sponsor and, and work this program, that there's another way out of it, I just ask you tonight to come to this altar and ask Jesus for strength to open your eyes in what it is you should do. Because I get it. I get that that's a hard place to be. And, my, and I spent a lot of time with my, my heart hardened. And I wasn't willing to think that maybe I needed to do this. And I invite you, just be willing to say, Jesus, Jesus, tell me. Jesus, show me. Be willing to, to, to see things another way. The big book of Alcoholics Anonymous says, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed this path. The path is the 12 steps. The 12 steps, they work. They transform our lives. We are living proof that we do recover from a hopeless, helpless state of mind through this program. And so I, I, I'm, we're going to invite this. We're going we're to open this altar. Those of you who are sitting at home, make this a place of prayer. We invite you to, to, to respond to God at whatever it is that you heard tonight or whatever it is the next step. Or, or maybe you're slacking on your own steps and someone else could be benefiting from you working your program so that you can get out there and help others. So ask God for the strength there. This cross, this cross is yours to, to lay yourself down. Let's stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. We thank you that you have given us this re recovery program to show us a new way of life. Lord, we pray that you open our ears and hearts to, to hear from you tonight. Whatever it is that we are struggling with, Lord, give us the strength to lay that burden down tonight and, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.